Okay, good afternoon and welcome back everyone to our options education webinar series. My name is Tony Zhang, the Chief Strategy Officer here at Options Play. And today we welcome back Jessica Inskip, again, the Director of Education and Product here at Options Play to dive into what is arguably one of the more difficult topics to learn on options trading, which is understanding the Greek. So first of all, Jessica, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be covering a really fun but exciting topic today on the Greeks. Yeah, I'm excited, Tony. We spent we spent a lot of time going through this one, so it should be a fun and engaging session. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we spent a lot of time discussing, you know, what's the best way to position the Greeks and help you understand uh, how they're helpful in in uh, trading options, what impact they have on your options trading. So today, Jessica is going to do a really deep dive into the Greeks. And for some of you uh, watching this today, this might be your first introduction to Greeks. You might have plenty of experience trading with the Greeks. Hopefully we have something to offer to you regardless of what experience level you have. But today's session is really the first uh, session that we're doing within our options education track that's within the seasoned track. Uh, before, we've been doing mostly in the beginner track. Now we're on to the seasoned track to go through something a little bit more um, advanced with respect to trading. However, if you find any of the material here today confusing from a math perspective, don't worry, we're here to help you implement this stuff using the options play tool. So Jessica is going to give you an overview of the, the most important Greeks that you need to uh, be familiar with as, your, as an options trader. And then I'm going to show you how to uh, take what you've learned here today and implement it using the options play tool. So with that, I'm going to pass this on to Jessica to help um, to have her kick off the session. I'm going to come in throughout the session and provide a little bit of color as she goes through the individual Greeks to give you a, a different perspective as to how to think about these Greeks. And then at the end, I'll come back and show you how to use the options play tool to implement what you've learned. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So as always, let's start with an important legal disclaimer. Types of securities, forms, and research tools used in this video are for demonstration purposes only and should not be considered a recommendation by options play or a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities. And this video is not intended to be used for individual tax, legal investment, or planning advice. Let's go over what we're going to cover today. So we're going to we'll start with why study the Greeks. So it's important to know is you're watching this, but what's the value of it? So we'll just cover that very briefly. We do have a lot in the agenda today, but I'm sure we'll get through it and it'll be a really engaging conversation. This is actually my favorite subject to talk about. So I'm really excited about it and put in a lot of work to, to get this to you. And so we're really excited to share this one with you. We are gonna review options pricing. Greeks are a component of pricing and it's all about the effect that it has on the premium, not necessarily um, predicting the future, but forward looking. So we'll go over that just so you, you have the, that basic foundational that we've covered in actually our first webinar in the beginner series. This is a builder on that. And then we're gonna talk about events that impact the premium. Then we'll go into Delta, Theta, Gamma and Vega. We did take off row. Um, it's just not in a lot of pricing models, but we can certainly talk about it if we've got time at the end. And then we'll put it all together by practical application when I hand it over to Tony and he'll go over the tool and how to utilize it. And of course, we'll save time for Q&A. So before we do that, I do actually want to put out a poll and uh, get a good idea of your confidence level. So we're putting out a poll, what is your level of understanding on options Greeks? We'll see what mix we have here. Looks like the majority of you have what you consider a very basic understanding. Many of you have a working understanding. That seems to be the very large majority. A few of you say you have zero knowledge. A few of you say you have very strong understanding. Um, so we're actually going to come back to this at the end. And we'll see how your understanding of option Greeks improved through today's session. So thank you so much for answering this. And looking forward to seeing if this session helps you better your understanding of option Greeks. Absolutely.
All right. So why study the Greeks? So first of all, it's options pricing. It helps you understand how various factors affect an options price. We'll go over that in a lot more detail. It also helps with strike selection. So understanding how a, the anatomy of an option and how things are comprised are just one piece of it. But as far as choosing which strikes and expirations and building on that, it's, it's an important component of the Greeks and the Greeks can help us do that. And last but certainly not least is position management. Um, the Greeks act in, in a certain way and they can give us an idea of when it's optimal to exit a position or move or adjust a position and it's on the strategy level or even at the portfolio level. And so these are just some of the reasons or the main reasons rather why one would study the Greeks. So this is a review of what we looked at before and understanding how an option is priced. Um, so I just wanna make sure that this is crystal clear because this is gonna lead into a lot of other, of other things. So a, a common question that comes up quite often whenever I first start introducing options or, or talk to people about options is, is why isn't my option moving in tandem with the stock? And the short answer is, well, there's a lot of other factors that are um, affecting the price of your option other than just the underlying security. And that's comprised by the internal and external factors that make up the options premium. So there's intrinsic value and extrinsic value. Intrinsic value is made up of in the money value. So the, it looks at the, the spot price of the underlying security versus your strike price. And then extrinsic value is primarily comprised of time value and implied volatility. Um, so just the example, this is the same example we actually had on the screen for the, the first webinar. But, and if you wanna know more details about that in marketing team, I'm sure we'll put a, put a link right at the top if you're watching this. Um, so if the underlying security ABC is at 103 and they have a ABC $100 strike 30 day still expiration call, if that's trading at a premium of $5, well, if we have the right to buy at $100 and can immediately sell at the market at 103, it has to be worth at least $3 of intrinsic value. That's its executable value. And the remainder is the extrinsic value. So that's important to know as we, we go through that, um, through the rest of these examples. All right. I apologize. I've got to move this one up. All right. So there's some events that we want to go through that affected options premium. So I have a couple events that are on the screen. So if the stock moves up, it's going to, this is pretty simple and something we all already know. It's going to make a long haul more valuable. That's going to make the long put less valuable. Very black and white, very simple. A long haul we want it to go up in value. So if the stock goes up, if we have the right to buy at a lower price, then what the market is pricing, that's gonna be, be worth quite more. The inverse is true with the long put. So if the stock moves down, the long put's gonna be more valuable. The long call will be less valuable because we want the right to sell at a higher price versus a lower. If there's less time until expiration, so I don't have more time until expiration because unfortunately I don't have a time machine. So time is always working against us. So for a, a long option perspective, that, that makes it less valuable. So those, that's, all, that's the decreasing component of the options premium. So as time decays, so does the value of that option. And because when we're purchasing an option, we wanna recoup that time value, that's something that works against us. And then um, another event is an anticipated movement, for example, earnings. So um, earnings has a set date where we have an expectation of a price movement of some sort, and that affects the likelihood of the option being above or below our strike. Because there is a, highly, a higher likelihood of that happening, it makes the option more expensive. That's implied volatility crush. We have a webinar coming up on that relatively soon, but that makes long options more valuable if that happens afterwards. So if, the, if you're holding a long option and there's an anticipated movement and a spike in IV, that's going to make the premium go up in value. Therefore, it makes the premiums more valuable. So that's an important and component. Yes. And, and I'll just jump in real quick because before we dive into the Greeks, this is arguably the most one of the most important slides to understand because the Greeks are really just 
the math behind these um, the, the concepts that you see on this very screen, meaning how much more valuable, how much less valuable is largely what the Greeks tell you. But in order to, for that math to ever make any sense, you have to first have a high level understanding as just to general impact that different events have on your call option and your put option. And remember every single option strategy, no matter how, how complex, Iron condors, butterflies, they're made up of calls and puts. So if you can understand them on a fundamental basis of how calls and puts are affected by these things, stock moving up, stock moving down, time and anticipated movement, you're going to have the fundamental building blocks for understanding all types of advanced strategies. So this one slide is the most important slide. And then we're going to do a deep dive into just the math behind how much more valuable does a call or put become as these different um factors have on the influence of your options pricing. Absolutely. And I do see a lot of questions coming in, a lot of which will be answered throughout. Um, so we'll, we'll save those to the end, but I, I do want to acknowledge that I see those and a lot of them are in the content. All right. So first question we're going to start with is how much does my option move if the underlying moves $1? So that, that is, of course, delta and the question that delta answers. I want to start with the textbook definition of what delta is. So delta is the theoretical estimate of how much an options value may change given a $1 move up or down in the underlying security. So with this example, um, if XYZ stock were to move up $1, then an XYZ call with a 0.3 delta is going to move up 30 cents. So that's per share and an XYZ call with 0.6 delta will move up 60 cents. So basically if my underlying moves $1, so that, that's the first question that comes up that I proposed at the beginning is it's not moving as much as the stock. It doesn't move dollar for dollar, but if it does move $1, how much does it move? That's what Delta tells us. So how do we actually use that and go through that? We're gonna definitely talk about that in more detail. So as far as measurement, Delta is on a scale from negative one to positive one. Zero represents um, any a premium where it barely moves relative to changes in the price. And um, bearish strategies are on the negative one side and bullish strategies are on the positive one side. So that's where it's going back to the, the slide that we had in the beginning. If a stock moves up in value, it's positive, it's on that bullish side. And for a put, since that's bearish, it's going to be more towards negative one. So let me add a little more color to that. The way a lot of people utilize this or look at deltas could represent the exposure that you have from a stock perspective. So it's said that if you have a delta of one, that's equivalent to 100 shares of stock. So if I have a delta of one and 100 shares of stock, then that's a, a, a bullish strategy and then negative one, short stocks. So that, that's where it falls on the spectrum. So regardless of the way the strategy is comprised, if it's bullish, it's going to have a positive delta. If it's bearish, it's going to have a negative delta. And that just simply means that you're going to profit from upward movement or downward movement, which we're gonna go through in, in a little more detail. So that goes back to the event that I have on the next slide. So a long call is more valuable if the stock goes up and a long put is less valuable if the stock goes up. We covered that earlier. The delta value will move closer to one if the stock goes up because it makes that makes the um, premium more valuable or the delta is more valuable. The option is subsequently more valuable. And then for the long put, the delta will actually move closer to zero. And there are a lot of ways that delta is used. And this is a very extremely important Greek that we're going to cover. So I think we'll spend a lot of time on this one. Um, greater deltas are beneficial for long options. Um, bullish strategies profit. They move closer to positive one. As bearish strategies profit, they move closer to negative one. So we covered that there. Um, so that's important to know is how this equates to the movement of the security. So Delta is directly related to the underlying security. So your exposure to the underlying is one way to look at it. 
So I do have an option chain that I want to show you and, and take you through. So I pulled Disney, no particular reason, shape or form. So this is just purely for example purposes. But I wanted to show the way that Delta works with a 30-day expiration. And I'm going to util utilize this 30-day expiration throughout as we explain the multiple Greeks. But essentially, options, um, it, it's not necessarily linear, and there is a lot of components that are moving on. So if you have an at the money option, like this 132 Disney call right over here, so the last price of Disney's right here, this has a delta of around 0.5. And an out of the money call, this is the 145, that's got a delta of about 0.17. And the very deep in the money call, so a 95 strike, that's got a delta of 0.97. So take that into account and, and think about that for a moment. At the money is halfway towards its 100 shares value of the underlying, so 100 shares of Disney. As this gets deeper in the money, so we get to the 95 strike, the delta is extremely close to one. And there's something that happens with options as they get deeper into the money is they start losing their extrinsic value regardless of time left till expiration. This is 30 days left until expiration. So you notice here that the greatest extrinsic value is actually at the at the money options right here with the 0.51 delta. The least is in the deep in the money options. And these are all the same expirations with 36 cents. And then right in the middle is this very, well, not very far, but far out of the money option with 111. So a good way I like to look at this is if you're looking at it from purely the perspective of acting like the security, that's an important thing just to notate here is that the deeper that an option goes into the money, the more it's gonna start acting like the stock, which means it's going to have a higher delta. And you would look at deltas for momentum required. So in a way, that's your goal and it's run its course when it's done that. If you, there isn't, there, there's sure there's upward movement, but at that point it becomes a liquid and there's other, other factors that happen. That's the important piece that I want you to take away there. Looking at how it's actually used, so how do, how do we apply that and utilize what I just told you going forward is assessing directional risk. So um, deltas are pretty, or the Greeks really, are very specific when you look at them on an individual basis, meaning long call on its own, long put on its own, short put on its own, short call on its own. But when you start combining things together, things can certainly move around and, and promote whole portfolio level or a strategy level. And perhaps you want to see if which way or directional movement you will benefit from. And that's the way looking at combined deltas can help us. So with this example, I've got a covered call on the screen. I did not put a strike price on here. However, deltas help you pick that strike. So that, that's the purpose of that. So our long stock represents 100 shares of, um, so this is 100 shares of XYZ, which one delta represents 100 shares. If we sell a short call with a 0.3 delta, that's reducing our directional exposure. And that's true because we're capping our upward momentum with the addition of a short call. So therefore our directional risk or directional exposure is reduced in this case. So that's the way it would, I would look at it applied in a strategy perspective is what's my net deltas or my net momentum that's required or, or movement up or down. And a good way to interpret this as well, I wanna make sure I call that out. When you, when you say this, and another way to look at it is if I have a net delta of 70 or 0.7, it simply means that as the underlying moves up $1, I'm going to gain $70. So it's a good way also just to understand how much you're going to make holistically when looking at the option or strategy as a whole. So I've thrown up a long at the money straddle here. So that's just comprised of a long call and a long put. Both have the same strike and expiration here. So where this one is helpful is a lot of times 
they're not exactly the same delta. So you may not have a delta of zero. However, you might lean towards the positive end or the negative end of the spectrum. So this can give us an idea if I'm playing earnings, for example, and I want to look at or perhaps capitalize on a downward movement or I'm more um, apt on the upwards movement, I would want to make sure that I have a net delta that reflects the directional feeling that I have of the underlying security. So in this case, it, sh it should be relatively small and it's going to be neutral with something like this. But this is a positive delta, which means I'm leaning more towards the upward end rather than the downward end. Still playing both sides, but in this strategy specifically, I have a positive delta, which means I'm going to benefit from positive, positive movement. Um, I do see a question from Greg I'm going to answer real quick. The You multiply it times 100. So both are correct. 70 cents per share times 100 altogether is 70. That's where these numbers are coming from. So that's, that's one component of utilizing delta is assessing my directional exposure, my directional risk. Um, so stock sensitivity, we talked about that. It indicates when it starts acting like the stock. So that's when you have the exhausted long call. It's going to be very, very close to one, which means it's, it's really run its course. It has a, a lot more upward. It, it's had a ton of upward momentum at that case if you hold a call that has a very high delta. Therefore, it starts acting like the security. All extrinsic value is removed. And at that point, you might as well just own the stock because you have something that expires that you need to, to really care for. It's also utilized for assessing the probability of in the money at expiration. And this is probably actually the most commonly used method of Delta, I would say, is simply the probability of it expiring or being in the money at expiration. So. A higher delta means it's more likely to be in the money at expiration. And if you think about that logically, it perhaps it's because it's already in the money. Um, but a, a good way to look at that is if you are trying to capitalize on upward momentum or you are selling premium and you do not want it to be in the money, your net deltas can help you choose optimal strikes because there are other components involved and that will give us a good idea if the outcome that you're looking for is actually probable. All right, so that covers part of Delta. Um, Tony, any other color you wanna to add to that? Yeah, so I think this um, slide that you have up really you know, expresses the importance of Delta as a Greek or rather as an indicator for traders because you know, you, it's it serves a dual purpose um, for understanding the um, the sensitivity of the option that you're trading relative to the stock, because ultimately most of us are trading options because we have a directional view on the stock. So, so it's really important to understand if the stock moves to a specific price or to our price target or uh, you know, ten percent higher, ten percent lower. What does that actually impact? You know, our um, p l from an options perspective you know delta is the the delta is the is the grief that gives us that understanding and then also the probability of, of being in the money at expiration that's really useful in helping us select strike prices you know one of the one of the things that uh, a lot of traders struggle with is, is consistency when it comes to trading options and that's because a lot of times you know when you look at an options chain and you see there are hundreds of strike prices it's hard to understand where do you start if you want to find more consistency in your trading using a probability based approach to selecting your strike prices is one of the key ways to go about finding more consistency in your trading so if you're selling cover calls using a delta based approach to selling cover calls gives you an idea of if i were to sell 100 calls how many of them approximately would I expect for my stock to be called away? If you're using percentages or if you're using, you know, just the premiums to select your strike price, you're going to find that number to be all over the place. But when you use a delta based approach, you're going to have a very consistent 
understanding of what percentage of this of the cover calls you sell will expire worthless and what percentage will get called away so really important to understand this one greek uh you know in my opinion absolutely all right which brings us to this next slide um you have seen this in multiple webinars and we are building upon it and we'll utilize it actually even with multi-leg options um I, I love to talk about them that way and utilize this chart so we're going to go through each greek and then of course add to this throughout but what i want you to take away from this is long calls have the right to buy an underlying. They are bullish. If they are bullish, they benefit from upward momentum. Therefore, Delta is positive, has a positive effect on them. Puts are also have that in common, the obligation to buy. So benefiting from upward movement. Therefore, they also have a positive Delta. Short calls and long puts are exactly the inverse. Negative Deltas because they're bearish positions and have that selling associated with them. So we'll keep building on this and a lot of what's on the screen is related to it, but hopefully this is a good tool to help you remember the Greeks. So on to the next one, we're gonna look at theta. So how much does my option lose each day as it approaches expiration? So let's look at this one. All right, so what is theta? Textbook definition, theta represents in theory how much an options premium may decay each day with all other factors remaining the same. That is an important piece there. That is why I underlined it, just to remind myself to tell you exactly what that means. It assumes the stock price is frozen. It assumes that implied volatility is frozen and it's a snapshot in time. So therefore, in order to understand theta, you have to look at the big picture but understand that there are a lot of other components that affect theta. So when we look at theta, this is going to move, everything else moves, but from a conceptual perspective, it's important just to understand these components. Um, so if one day passes, we're looking at the, the same calls here. If you have a call on an option chain and you see 0.3 data, that theta, that means it's gonna move down 30 cents per share as one day passes. 0.6, 60 cents. So that's rather straightforward as far as the decay. Theta is actually measured in dollar values. So it's not on a, a scale from negative one to one. It can actually be any value because it represents the daily decay. So normally you don't, you won't see it too high, but if you go to um, higher price securities like Amazon or something like that, you're going to see a much higher theta because they're more expensive. So it's rather logical there. Um, because theta represents um, extrinsic value components, and that's something that's utilized synonymously across the industry is time value and extrinsic value. So know that this is representative of extrinsic value. Um, because it is a time decay, time decay is not good for buyers. We want the option to go up in value. So therefore a higher theta so a higher number means a higher decay. Therefore, that is not beneficial if we are the buyer of an option. We don't want it to go down in value. But if you're on the seller of an option, you want to capitalize that premium and you want your option to be worthless. And so any decay in that premium is beneficial for you in the hope that you're going to buy it back at a lower price. So therefore, theta favors the or excuse me, favors the seller and hurts the buyer. This goes back to the screen that we had earlier. So the, that event, and this helps with that positive and negatives uh, with the chart that we're building upon. So if there's less time until expiration, that hurts the long call and the long put, like we're saying. When that happens, theta actually increases. And that's because there's more, theta is not linear, so the closer that the option gets to expiration, the quicker that velocity is that they're losing their time value. So that means theta will be higher in value and higher value means more time decay. And more time decay is a negative effect on long options, regardless if they are issued as a call or a put. 
And I would argue that, you know, the acceleration of time decay as you approach expiration is really the most important component to understand of time decay. We understand that time decay happens, uh, that the value of an option decays as you get closer and closer to expiration, but it's the speed at which it happens depending on where uh, or how far out an option is from expiration that is important to understand because that's part of why when you're looking at buying an option, we tend to prefer buying options that are slightly longer dated because you want to hold on to an option that's going to erode slowly, right? Because you're buying an option, you want the value of that option to increase. So as a buyer, you prefer longer dated options. As a seller, you want the exact opposite. You want the value of that option to evaporate as quickly as possible. And that's why you lean towards shorter dated expirations. Now, there are it, that doesn't mean that you should go out there and only buy leaps when you are buying options and only sell options that are one week out. You want to find somewhat of a balance between those two. But it, that as a general rule of thumb, buying, you want to go longer dated. Selling, you want to go shorter dated. Absolutely. And I think a good analogy that I, I've heard a couple of times about theta is well, I guess there's two, but the one that comes to mind is, is like a balloon. If you've ever had a balloon with a hole in it um, or something like that, it starts really slowly, but once it gets to the end, it just disintegrates and it's completely gone. And that's the way theta works. It's not slowly over time. And that's something you want to capitalize on. But if you have the value of your option, you know, is going to just fall off of a cliff, then you have less time and less ability to recoup that value because it's just decaying at such a fast rate. So back to this option chain. So this one is the um, same strikes, yep. So theta here is actually centralized around at the money options. That's what I wanted you to take away here as we go through them. So the, the deep in the money option, has a theta of about 0 0.02 and the at the money 0 0.08 and the far out of the money 0 0.05. So theta is that extrinsic value component. And we talked about this actually with understanding calls and puts. And if you recall, I said that you learned a Greek, I just didn't tell you what it was. And someone did say theta and they were absolutely correct with that time value component. Um, but that extrinsic value is centralized around at the money options. And that is that likelihood of a being above or below the strike, which makes things more expensive. And because of that, the time decay is also accelerated as it's on the at the money options. And it's actually higher, the closer it is to expiration. So theta, the graphs look like this and the um, ones at expiration are just spiked higher. So there's higher, theta when you are at expiration, the front month options. And that's because that decay has to, has to leave somehow. The option is only going to be worth its intrinsic value. And it's centered around at the money options. And that goes down as you go farther out until expiration. So how do we utilize theta? We can use it to assess extrinsic value exposure. So there are some strategies that are purely directional and you can put them together to understand if you're going to benefit from theta decay or if it's going to hinder you. So that's the purpose of, of looking at theta or one way that I like to look at theta. So because if, if you go back to this, this slide here, this is why it's important with strategy selection. Like I had the bull call spread on the previous slide the reason that that had a negative theta is because the driver of that strategy, the 100 call, when that was, I took that snapshot, was closer to the money. So the strike that's closer to the money is going to, um, at least from a theta perspective, drive that strategy. So that can help you with strike selection. It should be rather minimal with something that's a directional play, like a bull call spread. They kind of cancel each other out. However, the way that you structure your strike selection could make you positive or negative theta because it's not something that's necessarily, it's not linear at all when you go up and down the option chain. It's central, centralized around those at the money options. So that's an important component when you're structuring your strategies is does theta benefit this strategy or does it hurt us? And that's 
simple, simply done by positive or negative numbers. If something's negative, it's working against you. If something's positive, it's working for you. That's simply the way it's put. So in this example, a bull call spread is purely a directional play. So this will have a, a positive delta, but it can have a negative or a positive theta. There, and usually, like I said, very minimal or neutral, but it can give us an idea if perhaps we can move something a tiny bit in our favor and capitalize on some extrinsic value depletion. And in the interpretation of the 0.01 theta simply means in this snapshot in time, all else equal, the strategy will lose $1 daily altogether. And then I do want to look at a bull put spread as well. Um, this is not a directional pay. We are looking for um, just keeping our premium and, and we, we want that option to expire worthless. And we just added the long put purely from a risk perspective. So this is positive theta because time decay will benefit this strategy. Um, anything else you wanna to add to theta, Tony? Um, no, I think we've covered it because I think, again, I think the most important part about theta is really understanding that it's not linear. It, you know, when we refer to it decays to uh, that you profit two days, uh, $2 per day, that that actually changes over time as you get closer and closer to expiration, that decay actually accelerates. So depending on whether you're long or short, not only does this help you determine which options you might want to buy or sell, but also how long do you want to hold on to it? As a buyer of an option, I usually don't want to hold on to that option as it approaches the last few weeks, because as you, that analogy that you said about the balloon, which I've never heard before, and I think it's a great analogy, I don't want to be held, I don't want to be holding that balloon in the last couple of of um, weeks, if you know, as an option buyer, I want the value of that balloon to explode, right? And vice versa, as a as a seller, you know, I want to be holding that option, that balloon, or that option as you get closer and closer expiration. But there are some additional risks with doing that, and we're actually going to talk about that next in the next Greek. But just the acceleration and the nonlinear fashion of of theta is really the important element to understand. Absolutely, and in structuring it if you want it to be positive or negative working on your favor. All right, so back to the our, our wonderful T-chart. So this one, very simple. And we, remember we added this in our, our last one with understanding calls and puts. Time decay is negative for long options. Because time decay is negative for long options, theta is going to be negative for long options. It doesn't have a positive effect on them. The inverse is true for short options, regardless if it's a call or put, theta is positive because time decay has a positive impact if I'm holding a short option on an individual basis. On to, um, this is my favorite one to talk about to be honest, <laughs> is gamma. So how much does delta change when the underlying changes? So gamma is a derivative of a derivative. Um, so of delta of an option. And um, it, it gives a good idea of acceleration. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So we'll start with the textbook definition. It represents the rate of change between an options delta and the underlying assets price. Um, so if on an option chain, if a stock moves up $1 and we have a call with a 0.2 gamma, that's going to move up 20 cents or delta, excuse me, it's going to go up 20. And then um, 0 0.08 delta is going to go up 0 0.08. Um, so it measures the rate of changes in delta over time. And deltas are constantly changing when the underlying asset changes. And gamma is going to give us that idea of the rate of change and an idea of what to expect in the future. Gamma, I love this analogy. It's everywhere. I'm sure you've heard this one, Tony, um, where gamma is the acceleration. So delta is the direction, but gamma is going to tell you how fast you're actually going. So it's going to give you an idea of the, the likelihood of a, of a move in delta. And then a move in delta means that there's going to be a higher move 
if the stock moves up or down a dollar. So therefore, if you have a higher gamma, then you're then that means the way you're utilizing delta may not necessarily be stable. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, gamma does value from negative one to one. Long options are positive gamma because they benefit from an absolute increase in the absolute value of deltas. It's a positively convex relationship. And then short options are negative gamma because if there is increased exposure to the underlying, that is not positive for short options. Um, so that's the, the relation to delta there. So therefore, gamma favors the buyer and it does not favor the seller. And I do want to pause there. Or, go ahead, Tony. Um, yeah, I, I just want to take a pause there because I do think gamma, you know, especially when you first introduce it, is probably one of the most confusing Greeks to go over because, as you said, it's a second order derivative. You know, all of the other Greeks we're going to talk about today is a first order derivative. So the fact that if, if you don't understand the first order derivative is really complicated to try to understand the second order derivative. But, you know, as Jess said, the, the analogy here is think of it as the accelerator pedal. Um, and I would say that gamma largely is actually the most important Greek to conceptually understand because, you know, the reason that we trade options is because options give you what we call asymmetrical risk, right? As, an, uh, as a stock investor, you have symmetrical risk. If the stock goes up for it by a dollar, you make a dollar. If it goes down by a dollar, you lose a dollar. It's e easy to understand and symmetrical. With options, the, the reason we trade, trade it is partially because of the asymmetrical risk. We're able to, when you buy a call or a put, have unlimited upside if you have the right directional view. But if you're wrong, you get to limit the losses that you have, right? How does that, how do you actually get this asymmetrical risk? It comes down to gamma. Gamma is the accelerator pedal that, that increases the leverage as you, as, as the directional view the directional view that you have is correct. And then it's also the brake pedal that, that slows down the losses as it starts to go against you. Um, so gamma is what actually creates the asymmetrical risk profile of a call and a put. So again, while it's not as an important of a Greek in terms of the impact on, on, the, on the strategy itself, it's it's really important to understand Greek uh, 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 gamma as a Greek ex itself as to how it actually changes the value of your option as, as you get the view correct and how it changes the value of your option as it gets it incorrect. Um, and this is something that go is going to take a little bit of time, especially for those of you that said that this is your first time looking at an option Greeks or if you just have a very basic understanding. Um, but hopefully this, this gives you at a very high level just uh, just an understanding that gamma is actually what gives you the, the asymmetrical risk profile of an option. Yeah, absolutely. Beautifully said. Um, someone once told me, actually the person who taught me option, is that gamma's job is get to get delta to zero or one. So basically, your option is going to be worth value or not. And once gamma has done either one of those things, then its job's done, therefore it, it diminishes. So that's important to know and think about as we go through the option chain and how gamma actually works. But with that in mind, that is why it favors the buyer. If you have a higher gamma, that's higher velocity, higher acceleration. So therefore a sharp movement upwards, that's, that's what we want as a buyer because our, our risk is limited to the premium paid. And if we have a sharp movement upwards or in our favor, then we're going to make out positively. Whereas the seller, that equates to risk. A sharp accelerated movement is essentially a risk on the seller's perspective. That's not something that we're looking for. When we are selling an option, we're neutral to bearish or bullish, depending on which side we are. Therefore, an acceleration up or down is not positive. It's negative, And that's the way that they they fall on the spectrum. All right. So I added this event back on here. If the stock moves up, it makes the long call more valuable and the long put less valuable. So Delta has a positive impact if the stock moves up on a long call and a negative on a long put. 
So therefore the payoff profile is positively convex for long options when the stock moves in your desired direction. So if we were to flip this around to the stock moves down, then this would be more valuable and have a positive impact, which means directional movement is positive for those long securities. All right, so on to the option chain. So gamma is actually centralized around at the money options as well, and also higher than the front month options or the closer that it is to expiration. And that makes perfect logical sense if you think about it. If we are at expiration, we know extrinsic value is completely depleted. It's completely gone. It needs to by the time we reach expiration. So therefore, the only value that the option can have is its intrinsic value. That's going to be measured by um, a component of delta. And because delta tells you how much the option is going to move up, well, high, gamma is going to have to be higher because that's going to affect the intrinsic value of the option. So that that makes a really good sense as to why gamma is placed the way it is. So this is the same 30 day expiration. If you pull an option chain with the front month, then you'll see exactly what I'm talking about with that acceleration or the if you pull the chart all together. Um, but the deep in the money has a gamma of 0.02 out of the money relatively close to 0.014 and then at the money at 0.02. And it's higher at the money because it has a higher likelihood of being in the money. Therefore there's higher velocity and acceleration. And you can see that being a centralized theme through a lot of the Greeks is that at the money option. So that's why strike selection is extremely important in understanding these mechanics. So how do we use gamma? Well, there are a couple ways. Number one that I didn't put on the screen and I apologize for that is if you're utilizing Delta for the probability of being in the money on expiration, Gamma is going to tell you how valuable or the stability of Delta. If it's a higher Gamma, that means Delta is going to change. Therefore that probability is going to change. And that could be positive for you if you are a long option trader but negative if you are a short option trader. So that's the importance and the takeaways. I really want to make sure if you, if you just remember anything from this is just the positive and negative values of these and where, where you want them to be for your option strategy as a whole. Um, it's also sensitivity to the underlying. So if a higher gamma means that it's going to going to move it more acting like the security. So that's important to know if you have sensitivity to it. So I pulled a bull call spread here, pulling their net gammas. So the long call has a gamma of 0.04, short call gamma of 0.02. This was the 100 is at the money. Therefore, this is driving the gamma of this. So we have a positive gamma. So there is positive momentum here. What's interesting with bull call spreads, and we'll, we will go through this in so much more detail with, with other webinars, because um, we can definitely spend hours on this, but gamma changes as the strategy exhausts its maximum profit point. So think about that for a moment. If you have a bull call spread that has a positive gamma, so I am benefiting pos positively from an acceleration of upward movement. That makes sense because we benefit from an upward movement on a bull call spread. Earlier, I stated the 100 strike price is closer to the money. That's why it has the higher gamma. Well, as the underlying moves up past the higher strike, that's going to be closer to the money, the 110 and the 100 is gonna be more just deeper in the money. When it's exhausted, gamma is actually going to flip negative and an accelerated movement is not going to profit because you've reached your max profit point. Therefore, there's no reason for you to be in that strategy. And that's why I said earlier on that it helps with position management. Gamma is a great way to, to assess when you've exhausted your maximum profit potential. And it really just proves a point. You don't need to know that to trade a bull call spread. You need to know that you should exit when you mix max profit because you can't make any more. However, gamma just proves because it turns negative that that is exactly true and that's the case. 
So there's lots of ways that you can put this together and we're gonna go through strategy by strategy on what that means and very specific and how tools do that for you. But it's just interesting the way that those work relative to the strategy itself. So on our chart here, I hope you got this one right. We probably should have threw out a poll here, Tony, of which one was positive or negative. Um, but gamma is positive for long options, regardless if it's a call or put, because they're directional plays. Therefore, an acceleration is a positive impact on those long options. It's positive gamma. And then the inverse is true for the short options, because an acceleration equates to risk. That's not something that we would positively um, be impacted on our short options gamma is negative. And remember, we talked about that when we were we were charting the first part of this on understanding calls and puts, that the long call profits from sharp upward movement. Therefore, it has a positive gamma. This is sharp downward movement, therefore positive gamma. And then we want upward movement, but not sharp. There's neutral here. So therefore, that acceleration isn't positive for gamma. So I hope that adds added some clarification for gamma. That's my favorite one to talk about. Could not tell you why. Um, I just find it interesting. Anything else you want to add to that one, Tony? No, I think we've done quite a bit on gamma. And like I said, it's conceptually one of the hardest ones to conceptualize. But once you get it, it makes a lot of sense as to why it's useful for trading options. For sure. Um, all right. And then we'll, we'll breeze through Vega here. But how much does my volatility affect my option? So with Vega, it's not to be confused with implied volatility. That's very different. That's a forecast and movement. Vega is a measurement of how much the premium is going to move based on a 1% point change in implied volatility. So does implied volatility positively or negatively impact my option is really what you're looking for. So if implied volatility moves up 1%, Textbook definition, you have a 0.17 Vega, the premium is going to move up 17 cents, 10 cent, 0 0.10, 10 cents. Um, Vega is expressed in a dollar amount, so it can be any value. Long options are positive and short options are negative Vega. And we'll go through that in a little more detail. So back on the option chain. So implied volatility or Vega is very sensitive to time. And so options, um, the farther out that they go, the actually higher Vega is. So, and that gives you a, a good idea of why options are very sensitive to, or excuse me, implied volatility is very sensitive to time. So that is higher the farther out the options are and is also centralized around at the money options. And that makes sense. If you have an extrinsic value component and there is a change in implied volatility, your premium is gonna go up in value because your premium is going to go up in value and there's more time for you to move above or below your strike. Therefore, it should be more expensive. And that's why Vega is higher for longer dated options and lower for shorter dated options. And it's also centered around at the money options because of that same thing that we were talking about with theta and gamma is that likelihood to be above or below. And that volatility is very present, centralized at, at the money options. So how is it utilized? Long options have a positive vega and short options have a negative vega. And that's because a change in implied volatility means that the option is going to go up in value. And that is very good for long options. We want them to move up in value, whereas short options, we want them to be worthless. Therefore, they have a negative value. The combined contracts can just simply explain if you have volatility exposure, period, if you're going to benefit from an increased implied volatility or if you're not. So generally speaking, anything that's long is you, you want to have a positive Vega exposure. Any strategy that's short, you want to have a negative Vega exposure. Anything you want to add to that one, Tony? Um, not, no, I think the, the, the one thing I want to add about Vega is that there's a lot of um, as options traders, we talk a lot about implied volatility, changes in implied volatility, volatility rank, volatility percentile. And while Vega tells us the 
impact that implied volatility has on the value of our option. And, and this is a clue to one of the knowledge checks that we're gonna do here at the very end. But Vega is actually one that has relatively low impact on the value of your option, even though it's an important one to understand the dollar amount that it changes the value of your option is relatively small to the other Greeks that we're talking about here today. Um, and I'll show you this on options play and show you, you know, how you can measure the impact that Vega has and changes in implied volatility to the value of your option. But there's, there, oh, sometimes I feel like the industry puts too much emphasis on implied volatility in Vega when the reality is that it, you know, from a dollar perspective has a relatively small impact on the value of your option compared to the other Greeks. Mm. Um, so again, the important thing that I want you to take away is the positive and negative values. So Vega or long options are positive because they benefit from an increase in implied volatility. And then the inverse is true for short options. So that's the, the positive and the negative value. Um, exposure to volatility simply means if there is an increase in implied volatility, I'm going to benefit from it. So if, um, Elon Musk tweets that he's gonna join Twitter's board, well, boom, implied volatility is going up. If I am long Vega, that is going to benefit me. If I'm short an option, that is not. That is what that means. This is obviously a page that has a lot of things on it, but the relationship is really the most important thing. As you can see, there are four strategies, long call, long put, short call, short put, that's the building blocks of all option strategies. Every single option strategy is based on these four building blocks. If you can understand the relationship of how time and, the, and price and implied volatility changes the value of your option, you, you become a master in being able to create any option strategy you could possibly think of and have a true understanding as to how they will change over time um, or with the price of the underlying. And and I'll show you kind of how you can model this using options play here in one second. Yeah, um, you can do that now, Tony. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Perfect. Now, again, thank you so much, Jess, for being able to run us through all of that. Um, but now what I will do is show you how you can implement some of this in the options play tool. So we're gonna look at uh, options play here and what we're gonna focus on is really the PNL simulator because the PNL simulator has three inputs into the simulator itself. And it's really uh, around the three things that you learned here today. And that's price, time, and implied volatility. Those are the three major inputs into the value of an option. And it doesn't matter whether you're trading an option or a spread, and I'll, and I'll just make this a little easier so that you can see this between a long call and maybe a short call here. I'll have a, different, a few different um, options side by side so that you can see them um, next to each other and using the PNL simulator and showing you how the value of an option changes over time. And like I said, the most important three inputs that go into the value of an option is time, price, and implied volatility. Now, We've talked about Greeks and Jess showed you different Greeks, uh, you know, different values for Delta, different values for, uh, for Gamma and Theta. But at the end of the day, you don't have to understand those values. You don't even have to do the math. Our platform does the math for you. What you really care about is if I buy this option and the stock goes up 10 bucks, how much money do I make, right? The Greeks are what makes the calculations uh, or makes the, uh, you know, that the calculation possible. Now, you don't have to do the calculation. We do that work for you. So if you look at Airbnb and you see that the stock is currently trading at $170, and let's say you think the stock is going to go higher, or you think the stock is going to stay where it is, or you think the stock is going to go lower. And regardless of what strategy you choose using the options play tool, any three strategies side by side, you can assume what happens if the stock moves $10 higher. What does that do to the value of my option if I shorted a call, if I bought the call option, if I bought the call spread, how does it change the value of my option as I approach expiration? And the profit and loss 
um, calculations is really using these underlying Greeks to calculate the impact of the value of your option. And that's why we care about the Greeks, because ultimately we want to know if this happens, what does what happens to the value of my option? Um, and this is really where the options play tool while incorporating the Greeks does the work for you. And it's so important for you to, to understand how much you can potentially make versus how much you can potentially lose. And the Greeks power all of these uh, calculations that help us determine whether or not this is a strategy that we want to deploy or if we want to modify the strategy or modify the strikes or the expirations. This is what uh, powers all of that. And you can do it based on both time and price. So if let's say you think Airbnb is going to reach $190, which is where it which is the recent highs here, uh, you can plug that in $190. Maybe you're using technical analysis and you're assuming that that can happen the next few weeks or so. And you're saying maybe by mid-May, um, or yeah, let's say mid-May, it will reach that $190 price target. Well, now you can see based on this uh, price slider, what we are using is Delta and Gamma to, to make these calculations. And we're using Theta to calculate this middle panel. And what you're getting is the end result of what happens to the value of your option or series of options when we're talking about a multi-leg trade in order to understand the, the uh, potential profit or loss. And what I do want to illustrate to you is that notice how large of an impact delta or price has on the value of the option, whether it swings from a profit or a loss and how big of a profit and a loss is from a relatively small change in the underlying prices movement. As you can see, there are some big swings in the potential profit and losses of these types of strategies. Um, you'll see that time also has an impact, but as you can see, it has a smaller impact than what Delta has on, on the value of your option. And lastly, if you look at Vega, Changes in Vega also have an impact, but relatively small changes um, if you compare that to, let's say, Delta, which can change it by thousands of dollars, even for a relatively small movement in the underlying versus time and, and implied volatility typically has, you know, maybe in this particular case of Airbnb, a, a few hundred dollars of impact at most versus Delta has thousands of dollars of impact. So which is why, you know, when you think about these Greeks, um, it's not only important to understand it, but also understanding the magnitude of the impact that they have. And that's really what the PL simulator truly gives you an idea of or, or, or an understanding as to which one of these are most important and how big of an impact does it actually have. And you can compare multiple strategies. You can say, well, let's look at buying an in the money call versus an out of the money call. This is a common question that we receive from investors as to should I buy you know, a, a, an out of the money call, an at the money or in the money call? Well, the answer is it depends on what your views of the underlying stock is. And this tool allows you to put in those assumptions. Let's say you think the stock is going to go from here to 190 bucks by mid-May. Um, and maybe for now, we can assume that volatility will stay constant. Well, which one gives you the highest return? As you can see, it's actually the at the money option or slightly uh, the slightly out of the money option that gives you a, a higher return. So this is really where you can make the determine as to which uh, you know expiration and strike makes more sense to you. Um, and the only way to do that is to try it out and test it out. And the PL simulator here on Options Play allows you to do that. And if you want to track it over time, you can trade these and paper trade them in your paper trading portfolio by clicking on the trade button for any of these strategies. And you can trade multiple ones uh, next to each other. Maybe you might want to try one in the money, one out of the money. You can click on the trade button, add it to your paper trading portfolio, and then you can do the same thing here for our uh, out of the money, or I'm sorry, in the money option, we'll trade it and we'll add it to our paper trading portfolio. You can use our paper trading tool to uh, then uh, look at the portfolios that you've created. And I'll look at the portfolio tool here. I'll pull up my paper trading portfolio and show you. Now I have two call options, one in the money, one out of the money. And I can compare those two over time and see how this will perform as Airbnb continues to um, move in the in the future. So this is a tool that we've created to help you better understand 
the strategy, help you paper trade these uh, these strategies if you want to test them out over time, and um, help you better understand the Greeks. It's not an easy subject to understand, but like I said, you don't have to focus on the numbers. Don't focus so much on the numbers. Focus on the concept. Focus on the relationship. That's the most important thing um, more than anything. Our tool will help you do the math and help you do the calculation. And I just want to uh, answer one question that I saw during the session. You know, we talked about the Greeks or a specific, specifically the Delta as one of the primary Greeks for helping you select expiration dates. Uh, I'm sorry, selecting strike prices and probability of expiring worthless. And there were some questions about can you net the Greeks together to get that probability calculation? And the answer is no, you can't net the deltas to give you a sense for probability. But that's why we calculate probability of profit on all strategies. So and this is really the tool when you when you get into the multi likes um, uh, of the options, the net Greeks mean something, but net delta doesn't tell you probability. Net delta only tells you the sensitivity of the multi like strategy to the underlying stock. It doesn't tell you probability, but that's why we created the probability of profit uh, calculator uh, on your strategies so that you can see the probability of profit on a multi like uh, strategy here within options play. So that to some degree covers what I wanted to share with you here today. I hope that today's session really gives you a deeper understanding of, you know, these option Greeks, which like I said, is arguably some of the most important concepts to understand as an options trader, but also some of the most difficult uh, you know, concepts to understand. But like I said, what you don't need to understand is the math and the numbers behind it as much. Uh, just the, the concept and the relationships mean more than anything else to your understanding of the Greeks. So with that, what I want to do is I want to just say a huge thank you to our members for allowing us to take the time out every single week and put together this type of education for you to give you a deeper understanding of these option strategies so that you're better able to implement them into your account in, in a responsible way. And you're not just uh, you know, trading options in the dark. Uh, having this education helps you better understand how you can select uh, you know, the best uh, strategies for your portfolio. So for those of you that have not accessed Options Play here before, if this is your first time, you can sign up for a free 30-day trial at optionsplay.com. You're going to get access to our global macro research, our daily trading signals, and the opportunities for longer-term macro ideas from our research team included with this powerful platform that you are seeing here today and the options education that we provide every single Thursday, like the sessions that you are on here today. And for those of you that already have a membership or you're currently on a free trial, just remember to download both uh, the either the iOS and Android platform. If you're currently, you can pull out your phone, pull, look at that QR code, download the mobile application. We are in the process of en enhancing what we produce or, or provide you on that mobile application. So log on, download the app, um, and we will be able to, to send you notifications of events like this, and you'll be able to watch the recordings and access the slides for these events on your mobile app, and you can view it on the go. Um, with that, what we'll do is we'll open this up for Q&A, and I do think that Jess has a couple of polls that she wants to run, some knowledge checks that she wants to run before we log off here for today. So while she does that, I will try to answer some questions um, that you guys have submitted. There's both a chat window and a Q&A window. Please type your questions into the Q&A window, and I will try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. And I will just launch the first poll here. Um, this is a knowledge check on what we've learned here today. Which Greek has the largest impact on your options position? Um, let's see how many of you have been paying attention to the session here today. Uh, so far, the answers look very encouraging. Um, about almost 90% of you have answered the same answer. The number is decreasing a little bit as many more of you have answered um, with almost with more than half of you having answered 85% of you so far have the correct answer. 
Um, now, this is slightly subjective because it really depends on the option strategy you choose, but I think that largely, uh, in vast, vast majority of the cases, there is a single Greek here that has the largest impact on your options position, which also means that it's largely what, what you should focus on when you're selecting your option strategies. So I'm going to end the poll here, you know, almost two thirds of you have answered uh, and and 84% of you have the correct answer and that's Delta. Delta has a largest dollar impact on the value of the options that you hold. And, and Vega, you know, 2% of you have answered to this. Unfortunately, I see a lot of investors kind of use Vega as their choice for selecting strike prices. But in reality, Vega actually has some of the smallest impact on the value of your option. So. Keep that in mind the next time you're selecting a strategy and selecting your strike prices, using Delta as your primary driver to determine what strategy am I choosing and what strike prices am I choosing. Um, and let's just do one, one more check. I, I'm curious as to, um, I'm gonna relaunch this poll. What is your confidence, uh, what is your level of understanding of option Greeks now that you've finished the session here today? How many of you feel that you have a, a better understanding of option Greeks? Please answer your uh, confidence, if you will, in your understanding of option Greeks. And Jess, I will say, kudos to you. We've seen a pretty significant jump in the number of viewers here who say that they now have a working understanding of Greeks uh, and a significantly reduction in the number of users who say they have a very basic understanding. So hopefully, you know, today we were able to really give you a deeper dive into each of the Greeks. And I think Jess's, the slides that Jess has put together really illustrate for you, you know, the relationship in, uh, of these Greeks to the different four, uh, to the four core strategies and some examples as to how they impact the value of the options that you have. So with that, thank you so much for participating in these polls. Um, I, I hope that you've learned something here today and let's get to some questions here before we wrap up for today. Tony, it's certainly a dual effort. <laughs> Let me make that note. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, is simulated slash paper trading available for all? Simulated slash paper trading is available to all on the new platform. If you're still using the classic platform, you have the option to um, use the new platform. If you go to your profile, going to your profile uh, on the upper right-hand corner, there will be a link that says preview new app. When you go to the preview new app, you will have access to paper trading. Every single customer has access to paper trading. If you don't, please reach out to our customer support team, um, you know, which you can click on the questions ask us button here in the upper right hand corner. They'll be able to help you out with getting access to your paper trading. But as you can see, there's a link here that says preview new app. If you're on the old classic application, clicking on the preview new app takes you to it and you will have access to paper trading. Can I use the Greeks to help me make decisions if I should exit or stay in the trade? Uh, yes, Alex, you can. Um, there, we're actually gonna do a separate webinar just on that one alone because there's so much to cover on that, but absolutely Greeks can be used to um, uh, decide to exit or stay in a particular trade. And you know, largely that can be due to theta many times, um, but also Delta as well. I would say Delta and theta are two important uh, Greeks to help you make a decision as to whether you stay or get out of a trade. Um, a lot of Bob's asking, um, Bob's asking, will changes in implied volatility in the front month affect the longer dated option with lots of time remaining? So Bob, you know, implied volatility is not just, is calculated on every single option on every single, um, on every single option. So while front month changes in implied volatility will likely change back month implied volatility as well, just the change of the front month doesn't necessarily change the back longer dated options um, uh, implied volatility. So what you really want to do is measure the implied volatility for the options that you're trading 
you know, the implied volatilities of, of shorted dated options don't necessarily have an impact. They generally do, but they don't necessarily have an impact on longer dated options. How often does paper trading update the PNL? It's, I would say, minimum of once every 30 seconds or so. Um, but uh, certainly on every refresh, it will update the PNL. Oh, I did see a question on the second order of the Greeks. We'll cover that. Gonna be some time. That's gonna be at the very end of the mastery course. But yes, I would love to go through that. Uh, yes, second order derivatives, always uh, a fun one for those of you that do wanna have that really true deep understanding of, of Greeks. Um, could you please do another example of the options play tool on stock like Apple or NVIDIA? Sure. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter of the symbol that we use, um, but the PL simulator just gives you an idea as far as regardless of the option strategy that you're choosing, whether you're looking at bullish strategies, bear strategies, or high implied volatility strategies, such as straddles and, and credit spreads, just an understanding as to how much the value of the option changes, uh, how much of the value of the option changes based on changes in the underlying price itself, a price, time, and implied volatility. These are the three primary drivers of changes in the value of your option. And these are the things that you generally have a view on if you are trading an option. You generally have a directional view. You generally have a view as to how long it might take for the stock to reach those specific levels. And then uh, only in the... And generally speaking, in terms of implied volatility, I'll usually only change the implied volatility with some type of catalyst event, uh, such as earnings. You know, we know Apple reports earnings in 13 days. So if I'm looking at a, a you know a specific target price after earnings, which in this particular case is um, April 27th, if I'm looking at a date after that earnings date. I have to typically adjust the implied volatility lower because I know after the earnings event, implied volatility will collapse. And in order to get a more accurate reading as to the value of my option, I should change the value of, of the implied volatility. But as you can see here, even if I don't, even if I forget to change that, here I have a $227 loss uh, versus if I do change it, I have a $160 loss. That's a $50 difference on, you know, what is potentially, uh, uh, you know, let's call it, um, you know, a few hundred, uh, a few hundred dollars of potential profit. So the, the impact that Vega has while, you know, will get you more accurate. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't shared my screen. I apologize. Um, while the impact that, um, implied volatility may have on the option, it, even if you forget to adjust it. You're not going to see, uh, you know, differences between uh, that are night and day. It's really more of just um, it'll get you a more accurate number, um, but it won't drastically change, you know, your decision making process if you forget to use uh, the the Vega um, or or volatility slider. Um. I see a question from Vincent about shorter dated options having higher gamma risk in other videos. Mm, yes. Yeah. I'm assuming when you were talking about that, you were talking about short options. So therefore- That's correct. Yeah. When they, uh, so the front month, like we were saying, has higher gamma and that higher um, likelihood of velocity. Therefore, there's higher risk because you don't want those sharp movements for short, um, excuse me, short options. Yeah, so uh, as an option approaches expiration, many times if you're shorting an option like a short put or a credit spread, that option becomes extremely sensitive to very small movements in the underlying stock where you are basically, it's, it's almost a binary event. Either you're 
hugely profitable or you start to lose money on that particular trade. Um, and, and that's the decision making process that you have to make as you get closer and closer to expiration that you don't have to make when you still have plenty of time left. And that's why, generally speaking, as you're shorting an option, you want to roll that trade you know, within the last two weeks of expiration to avoid that gamma risk. Um, regarding iron condors, and you know, I, I tend to agree that when you're using iron condors, you know, I, I almost never trade an iron condor as a single strategy. I'll leg into an iron condor using support and resistance. So as the as the stock is trading near the bottom of a support level, that is typically when I might initiate the put credit spread side. And then as it perhaps bounces higher and towards the top end of the range, that's when I might establish the call spread side of an iron condor and by the time that I've traded the two, I now have an iron condor. So I tend to agree, but but in choosing the strike prices when I'm near that support and resistance, that is when I'm going to use deltas for my choice of strike prices. Do I have a formula for the Greeks? John, if you really are interested in the formula for the Greeks, you absolutely should go and Google it. Um, it's gonna require quite a bit of a math uh, deep dive in order to understand it really kind of at the crux of it is calculus, right? Um, if you know, that's where the name derivative derivatives comes from is calculus and you're deriving the value of, of, of the option from you know, some other value. That's kind of where all the Greeks come in. So it, it requires a basic, I would say a fairly in-depth understanding of calculus to go through the formulas of the Greeks. Mm -hmm. See, what would the gamma do to the trade in the last two weeks? Um, well, it depends on where the underlying is, but it should increase as it gets closer. And because it increases, that's why that risk increases. And that's why Tony is saying to roll it out to a farther expiration to decrease your gamma exposure. Um, and a great question here is when will you use a straddle? Well, if you learn something from Jess's uh, session here today. A short straddle is largely delta neutral because the, 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 the delta of the call and the put largely net each other out. Um, you are short gamma in this particular case, and but you are largely short volatility, meaning your largest exposure when you're short a straddle is going to be in Vega. Vega is going to have a relatively large uh, impact on the value of a short straddle. So Short straddle means that you generally have a neutral directional view. That's what the delta and gamma views are for a short straddle. And because you are vastly short volatility, you want volatility to decrease. As you can see, as I, if, if everything stays the same, my profits here, um, if the stock is the same in, in May, it'll be a six, a $418, but if volatility decreases, it increases my potential profits. So. A short straddle has virtually zero delta exposure, very little gamma exposure unless the stock starts to move, but it has a lot, a lot of vega exposure. So when do you want to short a straddle? You want to do it when you think implied volatility is going to decrease. So generally speaking, when IV rank is very high, that is usually a good time to look at selling a straddle. And, and this is really where you are starting to take what you've learned here today and applying it to what's the optimal strategy and what how do you pick your strike prices? Because depending on what your views are, whether it's direction, whether it's based on time, whether it's based on volatility, that helps you select your strategy. And no, I'm not gonna break down the Black-Scholes model here today, <laughs> Greg. Um, that is for another day. And there's plenty of breeding on the internet if you wanna, if you really wanna do that. Um, I think I would lose pretty much everyone here um, if I started to dive into the Black-Scholes model. Um, with that, that covers the, the questions here for today. Uh, once again, thank you so much for taking the time out here this afternoon. I hope that this was helpful in giving you a better understanding of the option Greeks. Thank you so much to Jess for putting this fantastic session here today, putting those slides together. We will be sending you both the slide deck, 
the recording for today. And we will actually be doing a few infographics from the primary slides of today's session. And hopefully that will help solidify your understanding, uh, provide you with some cheat sheets that you can print out and put on your desk. And just as a quick reminder, if, if you ever get confused with these uh, Greeks as to what relationship they have on the impact of your options price. With that, thank you so much. Thank you, Jess. And I hope you guys have a great evening. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, everyone.